Welcome to Commander Pop Culture, a place to gather magical information with some laughs, might I add. Hello, everyone. Sorry, um, I'm having audio recording issues. My equipment keeps cutting out on itself, but I am against a Admiral Beckett Brass, an Elish Norn, and a Chisa Goria Forge Tyrant. Playing Kellen the Kid. The whole goal of this deck is to make my artifacts got zero and chain through my decks to the point where I can cast everything for free. Everything? Everything. From the top of my library. Kellen is pretty awesome in that he lets you put something down from your hand of equal or lesser cost equal to the thing that you cast from anywhere other than your hand. I think my audio equipment's gonna stick right now. So that's good. I basically find one of my future side effects like reality chip here. I get my Sensei's Divining Top and I play that for free off the top of my library with a coupon. There's also another way that this deck wins and that it locks people out of the game by things like Knowledge Pool and uh, Linbala. Knowledge Pool felt like a fun shoehorn because you want to be casting things from outside of your hand anyways. Getting free stuff that way seems good on its own, and then you combine it with something else. It just felt easy to include. The Cheese Goria Forged Tyrant deck's getting a nice start. They, this commander has affinity for artifacts. On attack, they get to exile five cards from their library, and then they get to cast an artifact cell from them, and it gains affinity for artifacts as well. Well, I drew Waterlog Grove. I have nothing to play right now, but you should always lead off with your paired mana sources first, just in case you draw into something down the road. Has a significantly more challenging CMC to work with. I am a little concerned about Elish Norn because I do have a lot of artifacts that cantrip off of ETB. It'll make those useless, so hopefully I get those out of my hand before that's a factor. And then the Admiral Beckett Brass player is a, uh, a pirate theme deck. I think it's when three pirates deal damage to a player to get to steal a permanent from that person. Pretty darn good. I haven't seen an Admiral Beckett Brass in a while. I've been playing against a lot of mono white decks on the channel lately, and they've been pretty strong. I've been very impressed from what I've been seeing from these decks. Elish is probably one of the better mono white commanders, because uh, not only do you get to advance your game plan, you hinder everyone else's with her uh, no ETB clause and doubling yours. I'm not entirely dependent on the ETB trigger. My deck wins without him, but it could be a significant hindrance. He casts it for the prototype half, so it just comes in as a 2-2 with Trample and Haste. So he gets two two twos on top of this but he wants his artifact count nice and high so he could reduce the cost of his commander these had haste so i was kind of weirded out why he didn't attack with them we all have open boards i guess he doesn't want to upset anybody too early in the game what's nice about these like really crappy two drop can tripping artifacts is everyone will think that you're just playing with a bunch of junk <laughs> you know what i mean they're in the deck for a purpose it's just so you could find your combo pieces faster and they're colorless things to reduce via coupons it also helps fix when you brick on like a land on the top of your library, play the get past it and then keep playing more spells off the top. Strip mining the mountain can be pretty annoying for this red player because the Chis Goria requires triple red and he is nowhere near that. I like how the mono white player is also named Snowstorm. Like white on rice and a glass of milk and a paper plate in a snowstorm. Nah, very fitting for a mono white deck. Lately, I've been seeing people surrender for not the best reasons, and um, maybe that strip mine will make this red player surrender. I've seen people surrender for less, so I wouldn't be entirely surprised. Maybe I should have played the reality chip over the wedding invitation, because uh, for tempo reasons, I could have played it, played Kellen, and then attached it the following turn, but now I delayed that some tempo issue there. And I probably would have been able to weave the Springleaf drum somewhere in there uh, to get this card draw down. Yeah, I probably could have done that better. And now we have a 3-3 blocker with Life Link. Not bad. You really don't need Kellen until you're gonna close up the game. Kind of turns your lands into moxes. And you're able to play things off the top of your library. The minimal thing you get to put into play cheat wise is a land most of my lands come in on tap and that makes it so you could follow up with lab maniac and win the game once the combo happens with sensei's divining top i did draw a dark seal mutation that ain't bad can uh take care of a pesky commander this is a budget deck in paper i designed this to be under hundred dollars this causes a weird phenomenon where I'm playing with my hands behind my back. I don't have access to things like Dockside, but playing Dockside on Moto is 
pretty darn cheap. So people's definition of casual is different. What a $100 deck is on paper, it's $10 or less on Moto. So I have to deal with things like Dockside on a regular basis or like Elish Norn, who I think uh, is like a $30, maybe $20 in paper. I normally wouldn't have to deal with. Magic's a hobby for most people and you could affordably do it on Moto. I think Dockside is $80 for its cheapest version. I think for this full R1, it's well over 100. Right. On the spine, it had affinity for artifacts and he had seven. So it was effectively a free spell at seven mana. <laughs> hey, I got a requisition raid. I could uh, blow up an artifact in an enchantment and that'd be pretty devastating. So uh, sawing in half the sailor means to get two more treasures. It's probably the most popular card from Infinity set. I think what's wild about it is it's instant speed. So you can do some funky shenanigans with it and it increases his pirate count for stealing people's stuff. I could have dark seal mutation his cheese. He's running out of gas. He's only got three cards left in his hand and he's um, looking five cards deep with every attack. So he's getting some unique card advantage in selection once a turn. I think I could afford to let it go on a little bit longer. I hope he doesn't find some kind of uh, combo enabler like KCI and starts looping the spine. That'd be pretty brutal. Nice. First of all, each turn has Cascade, as long as it's been a treasure. Now he's got two card advantage pieces. Whoa. Found a Black Blade. Uh, I'm not expecting a burn spell, but if he has a Lightning Bolt, he has a Lightning Bolt. It's not too scary because he's only got two lands in play, so he's only buffing something plus two plus two. Could be worse. Making rookie mistakes. Could have tapped it with uh, Springleaf Strong. So now it's no longer a creature. It's uh, a little bit of extra mana. Instead, I'm forced to tap Kalendash. Doesn't feel good. Uh, upset the red player a little bit. Friends of Gadgeteer is pretty sweet. I don't know, if the pirate player wants to hit me and steal stuff from me, then so be it. It's the price of doing everybody a favor by uh, hindering the right player a little bit. I think that's like the, the crappy part about magic is people could be very opportunistic. Backstabber! You can do things for the good of the table, but people will always act in their own interests, and that's perfectly okay. Um, everyone is here trying to win the game. People don't owe you anything. Feeling generous and not beating on me, thank you. I'm hoping that I could just hide, you know what I mean? I'm hoping people just leave me alone and feel sorry for me for as long as possible. <laughs> this pirate's pretty sick though. His attacking pirates get plus two plus oh whenever they attack. For missing as many land drops that I have, I've still been pretty active in the game, I feel like. I think it's because my mana curve is really low. It's like 1.82. Always got something to do. This might take my reality chip. No, just hitting the soul ring. It's not a bad choice because uh, like I said earlier, the, re the black blade isn't doing much right now. We're just all slowly chipping away at this red player. If you watched my last video when I was playing loot, I was talking about if you stick around dynamic shift, that's what's happening right now is uh, the red player had a really strong start and had people left, there had been almost a snowball's chance in hell that we'd make a comeback. But since we did, the second place player, who's definitely in the mono white player, has been taking the beats for me and the pirate player to offer aid and uh, shifting the dynamics a little bit. That's a good card for him. He spent the treasure to cast Karn, so he got the cascade into the Reaver Cleaver. He doesn't have enough mana to equip it. This happens on upkeep, he gets a bunch of mana. Karn Legacy Reforge is so strong. It basically melds two cards together. Ooh, I have Boromir on top of my library, so that means I could go for the Knowledge Pool play and lock people out of the game, and then I have to deal with what's in play. That'll be really hard to do because uh, the pirate player will hit me and won't be cool about it. Got my friends at Gadgets here, so now whenever I cast an artifact, I can make a clue and the activation cost is reduced. Got no lands put in play, but I got a land off the top of my library finally. Could go for the Wellspring, but I kind of want to take away this Reaver Cleaver. Or no, I should probably take away the Karn. That's probably way too good. I'm really close to closing this game out though. I got one half the combo in play. It's just the board is a little too cluttered for my liking. These pirates will be a factor. Effectively deal with the metal in the right player, but not this one over here. He could start picking away my combo if he gets enough pirates in play. He does have to connect with three, but I don't want to trade my fiddle bender, that's for sure. I do have a nice target for reshape. I can cast Iker Wellspring, sack it to reshape, and draw two cards if I brick on two lands on top of my library. Boromir just straight up counters Reign of Riches, so it's not that big of a deal that I couldn't blow it up because whenever someone tries to cast something for free, it gets countered by Boromir, and Cascade is 
casting stuff for free. Oh, good. You mean no fun. Vex Mix blocks with Mer Retriever and gets back his Karn. That's okay. We delayed him for as long as we could, and the Mer had to go off the table eventually. It sucks I had to waste a spell, but sometimes tempo matters, and uh, I think it does matter in this situation. The middle player wants his uh, Solemn to die, and I just said I would do it. Can't hurt to gain some life. I'm guessing he's stuck on something. He must have a bunch of cards that cost six or more mana, because he's specifically looking for a land here. O-ring. Sticking with a bag of brass. <laughs> right player says, I miss my commander. Yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> this is why I play things like Dark Seal Mutation. When putting things in the command zone isn't good enough, Dark Seal Mutation come in handy. I run one of these kinds of effects in every single deck I play, and it's for good reason. So he's going to try and cascade into Sculpting Steel, and I counter it. <laughs> Yeah, Boromir is OP. Trinket Mage, okay. I think I'm there. Get my Sensei's top. People are relatively low on mana. We're gonna try. I get Sensei's top and then find a uh, coupon. I could do Oswald and get there. Cheat my Laboratory Maniac into play. So sorry I'm excited about card draw, but this is the end of the game. He could have drawn into a Silence and break this combo up. That would delay these guys enough time to interact with me. They get one revolution on the turn, but hopefully he didn't draw into it. Now I'm demonstrating the loop, and now my lands turn into moxes. Uh, I just need to find untapped ones. Exile's my foundry, but I do have reshape, but I'm a mana short. We lost someone. Let's go shields up for now. This is a uh, sort of hearth and home. Pro white, pro green, and he gets a flicker something and tutor for a land if it connects. I do have a blue creature to block. I imagine he attacks the red player and he lets him be hit so he can um, flicker his sky cleave apparition. What a interesting way of going about the way that he did it. I would put yields on, but um, because I have top and I want to respond to people's stuff, can't really do that. I'm just gonna equip a bunch of stuff, hit me for at least 10 damage. Hopefully you can't just one shot me, Platinum Angel. I could play around Platinum Angel, counter your Mystic Forge, makes a bunch of treasures, try to cast Battle Sphere without spending mana. <laughs> this guy's had a uh, three or four spells of his countered. I don't know if he realizes why. What are you doing? Kirk's good. He can loop his uh, Spine of Isha a couple of times if he wanted to give up a bunch of stuff on his board. I could sack my Boromir, make myself indestructible until end of turn, targeting Boromir. He could take away my reality chip. Oh, okay. He's just foregoing. In that case, I need the tutor for a coupon again. Redundancy at its finest. And then we start the thing again. He's like, unless I could find a way to answer his Platinum Angel, which I do, because my lands act like moxes, I'll draw my deck, I'll have a removal piece, deal with a Platinum Angel, and I'll win with a uh, Lab Man. No player surrenders. And that's the game, folks. What's interesting is I had knowledgeable setup too with Boromir, but I, like I mentioned earlier, it was a little awkward because of the pirate player. Then they left. I guess they could have went for it after he had gone, but at that point I had found the main win condition, which is looping Sensei's top over and over again. I think the A-list serve, definitely my uh, reality chip. It just lets me accomplish the combo way faster, lets me dig through my deck and find all the pieces way faster. Some fun stuff I didn't really get to play around with. Forensic Gadgeteer. When Whenever I was casting an artifact spell, I got to make a clue token, and then the clue token gets a reduced activation cost of one. So if I really break down lands at the top of my library, uh, that's why it's in here. I can spend one mana just to fix my problem and keep churning through the top of my library. This was a pretty fun, interesting deck to play. I got to lay in the toolies and hide uh, the red player drew a lot of people's ire and i got to showcase the power of not surrendering because i talked a lot about that in my last video and fortunately for me i wasn't the only one in that game that blew by those same principles say the white player and the pirate player left it would have been just me and the red player and the red player would have just been beaten on me mercilessly with that dragon for I don't know how long. I probably would have died and the red player would have won if people had surrendered. That's how it goes in a multiplayer format is it should constantly be shifting in terms of who is in the lead. It's like playing King of the Hill. The red player could have been a little bit better towards the end because the Spine of Isha can blow up any permanent. Could have even blown up my own lands. 
He could only loop it so many times. He was floating two mana per sacrifice. He had a bunch of artifacts in play. He could have been sacking treasures to get it done. He might have been able to blow up at least one or two of my key pieces. Because at the time that I sacked Boromir, it only gives indestructibility to creatures. My other permanents were vulnerable at the time. And he could have prevented me from potentially winning. Fortunately, did have another tutor in my hand. I could have just tutored my Mystic Forge instead. It just would have cost me a bunch of mana. It would have cost me six to do that. But he didn't know it was in my hand. Best line of play would have been for him to take away my reality chip and he just didn't see the line. He also was the same player that kept walking into my Boromir, countering his stuff. I countered like four of his spells and he didn't have to cast those things with Cascade or cast them for free with his affinity trigger from his dragon. I'm not sure what was going on over there. Sorry, Vexed. If you watch this, because I like to share this video with players that were in my game, maybe I helped you out a little bit in improving your game, if you don't mind me providing some input. I, it can be really hard to hear criticism from someone else. Sometimes not everyone's suggestion is the best, and lately I've been working on navigating not so great suggestions. Been finding silver linings, give a good thing to say back to someone. They took the time to, you know, comment and provide some kind of input. At the very least, that's very generous of people. They don't have to do that. But let it be known that when you're constructing your decks, you don't have to accept every piece of advice. Um, I don't think I was giving Vex too many suggestions, just I think very key suggestions that would have potentially changed the outcomes of that game so i hope everyone enjoyed everyone take care now bye